So, what's up guys? My name's Seth, you're watching Petro360, and today the goal is to swap the RX-7 from a carburetor to EFI. Now, I actually picked up a Fitech Go EFI 400 horsepower unit off Craigslist. I got it used for like 500 bucks, which is a really good deal. I've been wanting to go EFI for a while. Uh, my carburetor runs pretty good, but the advantages of EFI are pretty obvious. So, here it is. This is the uh, the actual unit. It pretty much just replaces the carburetor. Um, it's a throttle body style unit. Um, has four injectors in it. I think they're 80 cc injectors or so. Um, like I said, I picked up this unit used. So the guy before me had already installed uh, return lines, feed lines, the uh, fuel pressure gauge, which is awesome because uh, I actually tested this unit to test my fuel pump and I'm going to have to upgrade the fuel pump. So I went ahead and picked up a Walboro 255. And so I got this Walboro from TRE Performance. Everything I've seen and looked online, it is a genuine Walboro 255. It should just, you know, fall right into the gas tank essentially. But yeah, so uh, it's six o'clock now. We're going to try and be uh, EFI by this afternoon and see if we can test drive it. So uh, fingers crossed, let's go. Okay, so a little bit more backstory on the actual unit if you don't know anything. Um, like I said, it's a throttle body unit, pretty much just replaces the carburetor. The actual ECU is a part of that carburetor and you talk to that through this. This is actually a handheld. You tune through this, um, you talk through this, this gives you real-time feedback, AFRs, coolant temps, everything else that you pretty much need to know, which is really nice. Um, so this is going to replace quite a few of my gauges. Other things that come in the kit, of course your wiring harness. The other thing that ECU needs is a coolant temp sensor. Um, so this is going to go in there and you're going to lose the gauge on the dash unless you have another coolant port. The 302 only has one, so the only way I'm going to be able to see the coolant temperature since is through that handheld, which is kind of a bummer. So uh, we're going to try and install this in one afternoon. Um, <laughs> we'll see if that works. So uh, it's, uh, it's almost 6.30 now, so <laughs> fingers crossed, right? All right, so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and do the fuel pump. Um, come to the back, gotta pop off that cover and uh, get my hands smelling like gas and uh, go from there. All right, step one's done. Um, next we gotta undo the two fuel lines. I'm guessing one's gonna be send, one's gonna be return. Don't know which is which. Don't think it really matters. Uh, it might be different sizes, but I'm probably gonna mark them and uh, take a picture of it so I can reference back to make sure they go in the right order. But yeah, let's see if we can pull the old unit out. And hey presto, we've got the fuel pump out. My time-lapse uh, camera, I think, just died on me, so I don't know if you caught the end of it when I was pulling it out. But yeah, got the old unit out, and um, well, it's a little worse for wear, for sure. God, it's hard on parts. And then you can see how small the uh, 255 is compared to the old one, uh, and it's supposed to be even better. <laughs> I don't know, I guess we'll find out and see, so uh, see if we can get it swapped over. Alright, uh, new fuel pump is installed, that actually went really well. The only thing I don't like is the actual filter sock, it's a lot smaller and probably doesn't hold near as much fuel. Um, so we'll find out if that's an issue whenever we uh, go down some back roads and stuff. Um, but the other thing, the nice thing about the kit that I got was it has the rubber seat, let's see if I can get a shot of it, at the bottom there, and that helps it uh, sit into this. Uh, I don't know what you want to call this whole assembly really well, but it seems to fit this pretty good. Um, so I'm pretty stoked about this. Wire crimps, that seems to be what I've seen most people use um, on fuel pumps. I don't know if that's right or not. I didn't feel safe uh, soldering them, oddly enough, right next to the gas tank. Um, yeah, I'm hoping this is going to be good. So uh, we'll get it back in the tank and go from there. And Bob Drunkel, job's done. That was actually uh, really easy. I'm pretty surprised. I haven't swapped a fuel pump before. I've replaced one, haven't swapped one. That's actually where my tis missing 10 mil socket is. It's in the bottom of a Mustang gas tank. If you uh, happen to find it, please return it to me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, back in, tested it, it works. Um, so a little bit louder than stock, but it's not bad at all. So cool deal, next job. All right, now to the meat and potatoes. Um, it's time to uh, rip that hunk of aluminum off the top of the motor. Should be pretty easy. Four bolts, fuel line, throttle cable, and a uh, choke. Sweet, that went really well. Um, carburetor's off, everything's off of the carburetor. And one thing I'm really surprised with is how clean it is. 
actually in the intake. I've got the PCV running directly to the old carburetor so it would suck in any blow-by. So if I had blow-by, that would be black inside of there and it's not. So another sign that this motor is extremely healthy, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, we're going to uh, drop the EFI on top um, and uh, see if we can pump the fuel lines first and uh, last but not least, get the wiring done. So uh, we'll check in when we do that. All right, got it installed. Um, got fuel lines ran kind of temporarily. I have to clean them up a little bit. Also got water temperature sensor installed. The uh, O2 sensor is plugged in and now I have to wire this and that is it. Um, actually, I only have to wire one of them or maybe two. So it's like three wires and I think I'm done. So, uh, all right guys, it's the next day. Um, didn't end up uh, finishing everything last night. I ran into a couple issues, ran out of bolts. It's actually mount the carburetor and um, it was getting pretty late. So I just went ahead and went to bed. So today I finished up wiring. Um, really the only things I missed were fuel pump wires. This system runs the fuel pump off PWM signal, pulse lift modulation. And I wasn't 100% sure if I wanted to run the Walboro 255 off of that. I've got my little action camera set up for the first start. And got that all plugged in. So uh, I guess we'll uh, turn the key. Fingers crossed, right? All right, um, got all hooked up. The uh, fuel pump prime, everything looks good. Uh, these are the settings I'm running. So eight cylinders, 301 cubic inches. I don't know why it does that. Um, number two as far as the cam goes and then uh the other stuff i just kind of left as normal so uh yeah yeah first startup holy cow <laughs> that worked sounds pretty good Yeah, you can hear it um, kind of bouncing around. Okay, there we go. RPM, right around 900 right now. Um, map of 35, vacuum of 18, coolant temp. I don't know if you can read any of this. It's 82, looks like it's climbing, which is good. AFRs at about 13.5. Um, target AFR is 13.3. Um, so it's, it's staying pretty good, and the AFR trim percent is 21. Dang, that's crazy. I mean, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> that's wild. That's really cool. So it took us just a second to actually get started, but. It's probably too dark to actually see. But the, the, uh, you can see where the fuel is actually coming into it. That's really cool. So yeah, now we're up to 89 degrees um, Fahrenheit and it seems to be stable. Um, everything seems to be happy. So there you go guys, that's a uh, video of the EFI install. Honestly, pretty impressed with the Phytech system so far. It went on really, really easily and it did what it said it would do. It started up on the first try. Sorry if you hung out this long and we're expecting a first drive, um, that'll be another video. So make sure to like if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see me drive it again. And find me on Facebook and uh, Instagram as well, Petrol360. Thanks guys.